Hi, my name is Zane, and in the next series of videos, uh, we're going to be going over a bunch of leak code problems. And if you don't know what leak code problems are, they're basically a collection of a thousand or so pro interview coding challenges from companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, etc. And working through the problems not only helps you get a job, you, if you can get a job at Google, you can get a job at pretty much anywhere in the world, but it also helps you create cleaner code and makes you reason through things much easier and just helps establish some coding problems that will help you in your day-to-day -day coding. So in this video, we're just going to be setting up. We're not going to be actually doing any coding. So the first thing, first thing you need to do is download rest up and install that. So just go to restup.rs, go to your terminal and paste that in. And I've already done it, so I don't actually have to do it, but just follow the prompts. And let's see if we can make this bigger. And then we're going to, I'm gonna to go to my rest folder and create, I'm gonna initialize a project called, uh, we'll call it leak code. And then we'll open that in VS Code, so you'll need to download VS Code and install that as well. And I don't know what that is. Don't save. All right, and so then that just gives us an empty project. So now we can just cargo run. And you can see that we it prints out Hello World. But as you can see over in our leak code problem, it implements a function called solution that we need to implement. And we also need to go ahead and initialize that struct. And then we will implement it, solution. And then we'll make a public function, which is just called hello world, just as a starter function, just to get started. And then we'll, let's just move this code over here and then we'll run it. And so that should print out Hello World. But we really want to run this in an assertion. We don't want to be printing stuff. So we'll change this to a static string. And then for now, let's just print that out to the console. Print out the return value. And you can see this giving us an error because we're we're not returning a void type. We should be re returning this type. So I'll just copy that. Say a few keystrokes, and so that should work. It takes a while for the debugger to catch. Oh, we need an arrow right there. And then oh well, so this returns a static string, but I guess it actually needs a static string in here. So we have to do this and so now we're printing out hello world but let's do assert equal because it's just the best practice I guess that's sort of what it's made for and so we'll make sure that it's equal to hello world and we can see that it is because it didn't panic if we had left off that uh, exclamation point it's not equal so we can see that this the left is has an explanation point, but the right doesn't. So let's go ahead and fix that. Well, we're going to need to create a debugging. Debugging, obviously, we could fix that very easily. But for purposes of illustration, let's create a folder called VS Code with a file called launch.json, and then I'll link to this. So this is just the debugging configuration. And this only works in Linux. It's probably not, I, I don't know, you can probably get it to work in Windows. I was trying to do it in Windows subsystem for Linux, but I couldn't get this to work. There's just bugs, you know, bugs and everything. And, uh, but you, you can probably mess around with these settings and get that to work or just, you can also go to add configuration. I'd, and then go to uh, the LLDB. I couldn't get that to work though. That didn't work for me. So I just, use what you have here. And so now let's go to our debugging. Well, we can't do it. We need to save this. And then we'll go here and we'll go ahead and run launch. The launch, not the test. 
because we're not we're not doing any testing right now. That, the other one's for cargo tests. So we can see that, uh, well, this doesn't really give us a whole lot because it's not in the variable. So let's say x equals, and then we'll add this, and then we'll re just return x. So let's go ahead and run the debugger again. So you can see it'll pause right here once it gets done. Okay, so, and then we'll just step into that and we can now we can see our variable. I see, oh, this one has an exclamation point, exclamation point. So we need to add an exclamation point right there. And now we can run our uh, program again and we can see that it doesn't panic. So now we're all set up and we would essentially, our next phase would just be to, I'll go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and set this up. We're going to copy this straight into here. Okay, so now we have our code in here. And we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and return a vec. Well, let's just set it up for now. So we can see that it gives us the sample input. So we'll do, we'll run this function now. And for the sample input, we'll put a vector. Oops. And then we'll have the target, which was nine. And so this should return zero and one. Oops. Zero, one. And so it doesn't return anything now. So it's, this is gonna be wrong, but we're all set up. We could start working the problem right now. And we'll do that in the next video.